My friends, destiny is a gift. Some go their entire lives existing in quiet desperation, never to learn the truth that what feels like a burden pushing down upon our shoulders is actually a sense of greater purpose calling on us to aspire to things never before imagined. Some might argue that it was destiny that tickled you to click this video. My destiny revealed itself in the plants that inhabit Paldea. They called to me, the whistles of the grass, the rustle in the trees, Sunkern. My destiny was made clear to become Paldea's one and only plant master. But gentle dude, what does that mean? Well, loyal subscriber, I will be embarking on a hardcore Nuzlocke, conquering all that Paldea has to offer. Every gym, every team star base, every titan, the elite four and the champion, all leading up to Sada in level cap order. So without any further ado, my friends, welcome to the story of how I came to defeat Pokemon Scarlet in its entirety with hardcore Nuzlocke rules using exclusively plants. We start this run the same way we start any run, so to make it interesting, I'll speed run it for you. Clavel breaks into our house, we put on a really dumb looking hat, he takes us outside to brag about his animals, mum gives us a phone, Nimona does a hair flick, we briefly befriend a duck who obviously isn't a plant, and we use not a plant to beat the crap out of Nimona's crocodile horse and finally catch our real starter, Hopip. Hopip's entire evolution line is based on the life cycle of a dandelion, which is sick. So we catch one, call it apricot, and get on our way. By the way, there's a name theme in this video that I'm really proud of, so if you can guess it, leave a comment. Following that, we find a dinosaur, fall off a cliff, and conveniently get saved by the very phone our mother gave us maybe five minutes ago. We get kidnapped by Coridon and found a Lechonk squatting in Sada's lab. On my way to Naranja Academy, however, I stumbled across our next team members. We catch a Bounceweet who we name Enigma, a Sunkern who we name Spellin, and Bonsly who we name Tanga. Few things to note about Tanga. Despite having no arms, Tanga can hit the gritty. Tanga is also an ordained minister and was the first person to ever coin the phrase, I told you so. But don't look it up because Google's a liar. So get this, we're about 20 minutes into the run and Nimona has already sparked two fights. I didn't know any better. I'd say she was trying to sabotage me. Sabotage my plants. So I trained everyone to a decent level before taking her on. After all, my team currently isn't the strongest. But when it came to the fight, however, Tanga takes care of business. That's my tree stump. We get to the school and take on the three adventures that make up the Paldea storyline. And finally, we get to explore the region on our own. The absolute first thing on my priority list is to traverse the map and snag the TM for acrobatics. You see, the first two gems are painfully weak to the flying type, and acrobatics is a 55 base power move. Unless you aren't holding an item, in which case, the move's power literally doubles, meaning we have access to a 110 base power move that deals super effective damage to every single Pokemon the first two gyms have. It's absolutely busted, and you best believe I'm taking advantage of that, are you kidding me? So I did a little parkour and managed to snag the TM and teach it to Apricot before we even take on the first gym. But on my way back to Cortondo, an olive showed up. Fun fact, did you know that olives are plants? Therefore, I can I can use that one. So we caught it and named it Ganlin. Ah, uh, the bug lady. We lead Tanga to get off a of Stealth Rocks turn one, then I thought I'd go for a power gem on the nimble, but with my special attack getting lowered, I decide to switch to Apricot to click acrobatics. Which, funnily enough, smacks up her entire team. The teddy bear lived on like one and dealt way more damage than I expected, but it's fine because Apricot outspeeds and comfortably wins us the badge. Without any hesitation, we march on to fight the first titan, Cloth. This is a team we've got Tanga, Apricot, Ganlin, Spellin, Enigma. The plan is to literally spam low kick with a bond slide, but we got hit by a crit, which made things a little bit more awkward. I went to check Apricot's stats and accidentally switched it in, but Cloth through so we leave the first phase without any casualties. Arvin, beyond all expectation, actually helped. Crazy. We spam low kick again and as we already know, Tanga takes care of business. She's a girl boss, that's what she does. We enter the crab's lair, find a radioactive plant, feed it to our dinosaur bicycle and I guess that was the equivalent to being given the running shoes in the OG games, because now our dinosaur can run. Sweet. Now, I should have done this a little earlier, I know, but there's a specific item that would greatly help us on our travels that we actually have access to instantly. I am pretty sure that this is a sunstone. And you know what we can do with a sunstone? That's right, ladies and gentlemen. We can evolve. Yes, our sun current's not gonna be completely useless. Spell us! Slightly less useless flower, let's go! Next on the hit list is Brassius. And so we revert to the original plan and lead with Apricot. And you guessed it, we spam acrobatics. Petalo falls. Smoliv falls. But, um, Pseudo Widow, how do I put this? Um, I think I still have speed though, to be honest. I don't still have speed. Uh no! Apricot, no! Oh, no, that's not what was supposed to happen. I should have, I should have terragrassed. You know when you lose a Pokemon, but it's like, it's your own fault. Because that, that was my own fault. Oh, right, okay, cool. Salt in the wound. Oh, man. I, I, 
I'm not allowed to you. You're dead. Okay, so this is the wilted box. Apricot, I'm sorry. Apricot's wilted. Rest in kebabs. If you teach Bonsley Mimic, which it learns at level 15, it evolves into Pseudo Wudo. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> teach it Mimic, level it up, and it should evolve into a Pseudo Wudo. Oh my god, no! <laughs> uh, wait, that would have prevented the death as well. If I'd known yeah. this, if I wasn't a cabbage, then this would have prevented the death as well in Brassic. Oh no. Mate, I'm throwing so hard this run, you've got no idea. This is so bad. I'm gonna get ridiculed in the comments. So after my mate opened my eyes to how badly I was throwing, I did some research and I made sure to evolve Bounce Wheat as well before moving on. So let me be the first to introduce you to Enigma the Steeny. Tanga, the freshly evolved sausage, is my choice to take on the Sky Titan. I terrestrialize and miss back to back stone edges before literally obliterating the bird. I love how broken this bombardier is. <laughs> Second phase rolls around and we're not allowed to prepare for it. So after missing another Stone Edge, 80% accurate, by the way. That's just a lie. Tanga once again takes care of business. Does it kill? Yes, it does. If Tanga dies, we lose. It's just an entire team of grass types, plus pseudo wood. I love his little bulge. What a dumb Pokemon. I love it. It's just a sausage. To celebrate the dubs, I decided to hunt for our next team member. I'll give you a hint. It's not a grass type, and until it evolves, it isn't actually a plant. It's technically just holding on to one. So I hope you guys don't hate me for, for classifying this as a flower, but I'm going to catch the full baby. I'm going to call it Weeki. She's called Weeki. And before I knew it, Weeki was evolving. We absolutely take those. I've got a Floet. Floet is so cool. Oh, look at it. He's so adorable. Gaia Como! You're about to get smacked, bruv. I lead with Enigma purely to click low sweep, and if I'm being real, I thought it would kill. Okay, okay. That lowered the Ponyard's speed. Its attack rose sharply. Okay, do I risk this? Is Enigma fast? That's my question. Is Enigma fast? Enigma has 31 speed. It's the fastest thing on my team. I think I'm gonna take that risk. So uh, we get away with it, and the Rev of Room is all that remains. The Rev of Room. That's so hard to say. I switch to Tanga and click low kick, knowing that Tanga takes two snarls. Wiki comes in, and with the wise glasses and the terror boost, draining kiss is a two shot. These cars are so stupidly OP. You can't status them, you can't leech seed them, and they've got moves that are stupidly OP. What a debut for Wiki, right? Gaia Como and the dark base fall, and we walk away without losing. Than anyone. So when I was heading into Iono's gym, who else would show up but Nimona? I knew it. This girl wants to see my plants burn. I'm not having it. Nimona, you have made an irrecoverable grave mistake for, up until this point, my conduct has been benign. Salubrious, if you will. And yet, with absolutely no provocation, you have decided against our detente and have forced me to unleash upon you the vengeful flames of a thousand suns. You brought this upon yourself, woman! <sighs> Sorry, uh, I lost my cool for a second. <clears throat> So finally, it's time for Iono, streamer extraordinaire. She's got purple eyes. She tied her hair into a bow. She's wearing a fisherman jacket that's 25 sizes too big. She filed her teeth. And she has a Magnemite hairpiece, even though Magnemite isn't on her team. Mmm, edgy. Iono leads Watro, and I send out my tree sausage. I click Stone Edge turn one, and we land an unnecessary crit to take out the bird. Belly Bolt comes in and hits Tango with a water gun, and I was sort of hoping the Bulldoze would be a two shot, which it wasn't. But even with Electromorphosis activating, I had a feeling that Tango would tank a spark, which she does. Not wanting to risk anything, I switched to weak on the incoming water gun and click draining kiss which just misses out on the kill. That didn't go to plan but it's fine, Wiki survives a spark and floors belly bolt with another draining kiss. Now Loxio is who we want to set up on so I switch in Ganlin to use Charm who, as it turns out, is above the level cap. Hear me out, this is a blunder on my part, I used this level cap sheet which told me the level cap was 25 when Miss Magius was actually level 24. Forgive me Arceus for I have sinned. I made a mistake and I apologise. Well, I guess Arceus was watching because we get flinched on our first attempt at the charm and then on the second turn we get crit so we instantly got punished. I switched to spell in of all Pokemon, click ingrain for residual heals and then get hit by a couple of bites. After our flinch, we actually get off the leech seed and with that, we're gaining more health than we're losing each turn, which means we're free to comfortably set up with growths, even though the Luxio keeps landing flinches. But eventually, the Luxio falls without Spellin actually even attacking it. <laughs> and by the time Luxio falls, Spellin is at plus six special attack. Then the Miss Magus comes out. If I survive one attack, I'm like 70% sure that it collects Confuse right here. Yeah, it wants to status so that next turn it can hit if we break through, we win. Wait, we're plus six attack. Please, please. Yes, Spellin! Yes! Because we're plus six attack. Like, that could have maybe killed Spellin. Yeah. So that was terrifying because when you're confused, the amount of damage you do when you hit yourself in confusion is calculated based off the confused Pokemon's attack stat. Which in this case was plus six because of all the growths we set up. We seriously, seriously, seriously got lucky not to lose Spellin there. And so with badge three acquired, we march on. And I would be lying if I said the next fight wasn't terrifying. Mela is a fire type specialist, which for the most part bodies our team. Wiki is a fairy type which isn't very effective on fire and Tanga doesn't do cardio so it's a little slower 
more than I'd like it to be to face the car. Remember, against the Stormobiles, you can't status them, you can't leech seed them, you literally just have to find a way to set up before they come out or you're done for. I lead with spelling purely because I taught it rain dance to negate Torkoal's drought, which makes Flame Wheel moderately less scary, but spelling got burned. So I switched Tanga into a crit Flame Wheel, which does a whopping six points of damage. I decided to click Stealth Rock turn one before following up with a Terrastalized Stone Edge, which I thought would one shot. Nevertheless, Clear Smog isn't doing a whole lot, so I just click Bulldoze since Stone Edge is only 80% accurate, which in Pokemon terms means it's 20% accurate. And so it's time to face the car. Overheat doesn't do much to Tanga, and I opt for the Stone Edge, which does a healthy amount of damage. Of course, on the following turn, we get burned, which means the two shot becomes a three shot, but, and I say this with my entire chest, Tanga takes care of business. On another note, is anyone else surprised by him or some floor is helping with this? I honestly thought it was going to be useless, but I guess Spelling has some tricks up his sleeve. That's what I absolutely love about doing these Nuzlocke challenges. I'm forced to use Pokemon that I'd never give a chance. Let me know in the comments, is there any underappreciated Pokemon that you've used that have surprised you in a run through? Because like Sunflora is putting in some work, bro. I didn't expect that. Before we proceed, I figure it's high time I catch another plant, don't you think? Although I'm not necessarily going to use every single plant available, I want to catch as many as I can. So just outside Cascarafa, I hunt down our next team member. Capsicid. We catch one pretty easily and I call it Leechy. Have you guessed the name theme yet? Anyway, the fire typing really helps us out. I was gonna wait to try and catch a skull villain for the chance of it having the fire terror type, but because the next Titan's a steel type, I figure now's a really good time. We traverse the map to find a fire stone and with that, Leechy's evolving. Yes, Leechy, let's go. Flamethrower, yes please. So against Orthworm, it's time for Leechy's debut. I open with a Will-O-Wisp, but um, no flange. I said no flange, bro. No flange. Oh my God. Why would you rap? <gasps> wait, does that mean I can't? Switch. No, I threw. I'm dead. Rest in kebabs, unless this kills. <gasps> Wait, no way. Oh my god, that is insanely clutch. Oh my god, the clutch. Lichi was so dead. Lichi had two HP and was wrapped. Oh my god, that's insane. <laughs> I can't believe that just happened. Lichi OP, let's go. The second phase rolls around, and this time it goes more to plan. Lichi, bro. <laughs> I can't believe that. I got so, 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 so insanely lucky. I got insanely unlucky and then insanely lucky. After the fact, we do the usual, enter the lair of the beast, find some drugs, feed them to the peacock donkey who learned how to use his hind legs, and... <clears throat> Sorry, that scene always gets me. Let's catch another multicellular photosynthetic eukryo, shall we? I found a Cacnea chilling in the desert, so we caught it and named it Durin. Following that, with the level cap rising to match Kofu, a couple of changes to the team are in order. Now, it wasn't easy to get there, but all the way in Sokarat Trail, you can grab a shiny stone, which I've neglected to do up until this point, mainly because I didn't want to risk running into wild Pokemon, but now felt like the right time to go and grab the infamous shiny stone, which allows us to evolve Wiki the Floet into a bouquet of flowers that doubles as a specially offensive bouquet of sheer unadulterated to death, otherwise known as Florges. With our much anticipated team changes, we press on and head to the next gym fight. However, the gym leader's late and a stranger gives us his wallet and makes it our problem. Although, that's a cool wallet, wood cop. We head to Porto Marinara and Kofu has a school child compete in a high stakes bidding war for some kind of seaweed. Yep, that tracks. And with that counting as our rite of passage, we head back to Cascarafa to square off against genuinely the most extravagant eyebrows I have ever had the pleasure of laying eyes on. Kofu leads Veluza and I lead the freshly evolved Enigma. The plan was simple. Terra Trop Kick. Everyone, that's the plan in its entirety. Terra Trop Kick, everybody. And for the most part, it worked. The crab came out and honestly, I think it was a roll to kill, but it's completely fine because Wiggy comes in to finish the job. All right, well, that wasn't stressful at all. That was legitimately easy peasy. Right, hear me out. I thought Mellow would be difficult. No. This guy right here, Atticus, is the scariest fight of this playthrough by a landslide. Wiki is useless against him. The regular River Room one-shots Tanga with Iron Head and every other Pokemon on our team gets completely railed by their poison type moves. We are, by every sense of the word, screwed. The only way out was to think of a new tactic. But here's the thing. My tactic kept changing because no matter what I thought of, Atticus has more than one viable answer. First off, I evolved Durin into Cacturn. Not that that actually helps. I only did it because the level cap allowed for it. Then I thought maybe I'd catch a Fungus because then I could get the Poison Terra type, maybe? Which we actually did, by the way. We named him Koba, but no matter which way I look at it, Koba just wasn't offensively strong enough to do anything to Atticus's team. So, uh, back to the drawing board, I guess. My next idea was to catch Applin, which is actually a static encounter, so I knew exactly where to catch one. Appleton isn't a plant, it's more of a pie, but Flapple retains the presentation of an apple, and luckily enough, he has the Dragon Terra type, which is kind of what I was banking on. But again, no matter how I looked at it, there was just no way Hopo, the now Flapple, could defend against Atticus's 
powerhouse poison types. It was just too frail. And so finally, with a lot of pondering, there was an answer. There's one static Breloom that spawns under the level cap who conveniently has a rock terror type, which in this case is defensively incredible. Now, I don't know if it's always rock, but for me it was. I managed to find it outside of Medali and I promptly caught him and named him Jaboka. Then I googled where to find the adamant mint and after finding it just outside of Cortondo, I used it on our freshly caught Breloom. So before we jump into the fight, let me finally present our team all leveled up to 33 to match Atticus's rev of room. I said it right that time, screw you. Tanga, the pseudo widow. Leechy, the skull villain. Jaboka, the rock terror Breloom holding a hard stone with poison heal, which by the way, I pre-poisoned, but they fully heal your team before the fight, which actually hurts my tactic because poison heal helps. Hopo, the flapple. Koba, the fungus. And Ganlin, the dolive. This is it, bro. We're probably going to lose, but if we do, we're going to go out so winging. Here goes nothing. I lead Tanga and Atticus leads Skuntank. My huge brain game plan is to trick Skuntank into poisoning Jaboka so I could get use out of poison here. When Tanga is on the field, Atticus never clicks Venishock, which means every time we pivot to Jaboka, we pivot either into a Sucker Punch, which doesn't damage unless we're attacking, which we're not, or Toxic, which conveniently activates poison heal on Jaboka. Now it's a roll, so it's literally random which move they use, so all I had to do is switch back and forth between Tanga and Jaboka to bait Venishock into Tanga until eventually... Yes, fantastic. Okay. Now that Jaboka's poisoned, Tanga comes back in to finish the job. Firstly, I set up with Stealth Rock, predicting Sucker Punch. Then click Taunt to force Skuntank into Sucker Punch, which I just stole out. Then, once it's used all of its PP, Skuntank instantly lands a crit on Tanga, because why wouldn't it? That was a crit. Right, now it can click Toxic, and it's kind of fine if it does, because I've got Pidgey Berry. Yeah, no crit, no kill. Unless... Wait. Do we outspeed this turn? Because I just lowered its speed twice. So theoretically, we might... We outspeed! Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, the Rev of Room comes in. Why does the Rev of Room come in? What does I want to click? Knowing that Rev of Room wants to Iron Head, I switched to Leechy purely to click Will-O-Wisp. I calc it, and I knew that Leechy would survive a Sludge and an Iron Head, provided that neither of them crit. So we do that, we get the burn off, I pivot to Tanga to Tanga Sludge, and then on the Iron Head, I switch to Koba. But... Yeah, that's inevitable. No flinch. Come on, man! I switch to Hopo, then knowing that it goes for Sludge, I pivot back through Tanga, who unfortunately gets poisoned, which means this is the last time that I can pivot. This fight is so beyond scuffed. Finally, though, I switch in Jaboka, and I mess up by not terastalizing. I can't spore because of his ability, so yes, I take out River Room, but my win con is sitting at 38 HP with no setup, and still two Pokemon to fight. If I'm being real, it's not looking good. It's possible. It's unlikely, but it's possible. So I terastalize, and because we outspeed, we can spore the muck and put it to sleep, slowly gaining health back. The plan here is to get three Swords Dancers off to max attack and keep the muck asleep long enough to stall Jaboka's health back up to full, which in theory sounds good, but that's entirely RNG based. Eventually though, Jaboka gets back up to full health and one shots the muck with Brick Break. So now it's time to fight the car. From 92 to, oh my God, that did 52 points of damage. Oh my Lord, does this do a lot? Oh my god, it's a two shot. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, Rock Tomb lowers its speed, as does Spin Out, so it's, it's, I think it's down three stages of speed. Please go to above 52. No! Okay, so it kills me if it lands. If I outspeed and land this, I win. I die to one more Spin Out. Please land. Please. <gasps> yes! Yes! Oh my god, I beat him! I beat him! Oh my god, oh my god, I beat him. Oh, thank you. If I missed the rock tomb, then I just lost Breloom. Oh my god. Good lord, that was intense. I need a breather. Dolive is evolving. Let's go. I mean, heck yeah. Now, it's officially time to take on everybody's favourite normie, aka my father, aka corporate tax extraordinaire, aka Mr. Suited and Booted, aka Larry. And if I'm being real with you, this fight is uh, less scary than the Atticus fight, to say the least. Especially with Jaboka. I had a brain poop turn one and go for Spore when Kamala has comatose. But that doesn't matter at all. I terastalize to the rock type and start going for Swords dance. However, the incoming slam actually did more than I expected, so I settle for plus two and go for Brick Break to one shot. The Dunsparce comes in and gets floored instantly, and honestly, I'm not too worried about the Staraptor, even at 45 HP. See, Staraptor only knows normal and flying type moves, which obviously aren't very effective on rock, so we avoid the crit and one shot the bird. And that's all she wrote. After sharing a meal and some stock investment consultation with Larry, I'm ready to leave the gym and get on with my journey. I wonder what we're gonna do next. <sighs> Nimona, you don't understand, bro. My plans are the bubbling cauldron of molten steel that will forge the very weapon of your demise. The irony lies in that it was a weapon of your own creation. Ha 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 ha. Okay. 
uh, Cobra evolved. And so we pile drive our way forward towards Rhyme in the Montenevra gym. Montenevra. Montenevra. Montenevra gym. I don't know if you've ever read it, but Rhyme actually kind of has bars, you know? Don't try it with me. You won't last one round. I'm like, Sebla, my mean look will lock you down. So Rhyme leads Mimi Cupinette and I lead Jabaka and Tanga. This fight is super easy if you make use of the crowd mechanics. Like, if you're the first to terrestrialize, you just get an Omni Boost, which is silly breath. So I go for a Sucker Punch to break the Mimikyu's disguise and Swords Dance with Jaboka. Then we get hit by an Icy Wind, but that's fine. After the Omni Boost, I decide to spore the Mimikyu and Sucker Punch the Bennett. The Sucker Punch doesn't kill, but that's fine. Jaboka avoids the incoming Icy Wind, and with another attack boost from the crowd, I use the next turn to set up spikes with Tanga and kill the Bayonet with a Poison Jab. Then we get another boost, putting Jaboka to plus five attack. <laughs> and it also means that Tanga's Sucker Punch kills the Houndstone. And then Mimikyu also falls to Jaboka's Poison Jab, which means it's just Toxtricity left. I decided to switch out Jaboka for Ganlin, predicting the Hex, but in the end, a Sucker Punch from Tanga just takes it out. Ladies and gentlemen, sit with me. Tanga takes care of business. And just like that, we're six badges down. Eh, uh, I think I broke the Great Tusk. Hey, so apparently YouTube really likes it when you guys subscribe and leave a like and comment or whatever. If you could, it would really mean a lot to me. You don't have to, but you know, it helps the channel a lot and I'm really trying to turn this into my full-time thing this year. So, you know, it would really mean a lot to me. Anyway, this fight was kind of underwhelming. I started with Leechy so that I could half the Brute's attack with Will-O-Wisp and then pretty much just switched to Hopo, get the Leech Seed off after missing and then getting crit. And then I just kind of pivot back and forth between Acrobatics and Protect until the Great Tusk falls. I heal up our Pokemon because I'm a big brain Pokemon trainer. The Tusk headbutts a wall, eats some drugs, Arvin comes through and it's time for some good old fisticuffs. And funnily enough, Arvin actually brought his own lychee. That lychee sucks. I heard that lychee committed tax fraud. I heard that lychee eats crayons. I heard that that lychee French kissed itself. <laughs> Anyway, I will the wisp again, switch to Hopo again, and then take the battle with an array of acrobatics, leech seed, and protect again. We gather some more drugs, grind them into a paste, spread them onto a sandwich, feed them to our bicycle, and now it can fly. Sort of. Now, before heading to Alfornada, I figure that I want to pick up another potential team member. As it turns out, and you can Google this, Tropius itself is based on the Musa genera, the kind of plant known to us as bananas. Even its wing leaves were based on this plant, although it embodies the appearance of a sauropod dinosaur. In this case, glass half full and all that, it's a banana plant. So, with that in mind, meet Charty. Now then, it's time for Trilla- Nimona! Again! <laughs> Don't you realize that the only reason you still breathe is that my plants allowed you to remain breathing? You should wake up thankful for each passing moment is a moment granted to you by the grace of my mighty plants. They chose to spare you! Don't you see that every time you press, the dam cracks? That every single time that you test the waters, the waters rise? Nimona, heed my warning. Take my advice. Run. Don't look back, and by the grace of Geodude, do not challenge the will of the Eucreotes again, because Nomona, I fear that you won't live to regret it. So with our mortal enemy slash future ex-wife out the way, I guess it's time to fight with, um, uh, yeah. What was I saying? Oh, wait, did she just say that she wants to put makeup on my Pokemon? Chemicals, bro! Me and my plants are all natural, baby! <laughs> Don't come at me with that. We're beautiful just the way we are. The team. Ganlon the Evergreen. Lychee, the crayon consumer. Hopo, the malice domestica. Jaboka, the savior. Durin, the cactus. And Wiki, the widowmaker. I lead with Ganlon, and the plan is simple. Turn the giraffe into a marshmallow. We both set up Reflect turn 1, but then Ganlin gets flinched, but that's fine. The plan is to spam charm with Ganlin, and then when the Reflect wears off, set up another. With that done, I set up a Leech Seed just for some passive healing, and then Durin hits the field for the first time, might I add, mainly to set up two layers of Toxic Spikes before setting up enough growth to eventually justify using Dark Pulse. The Giraffe falls and Gardevoir comes in. Gardevoir instantly gets badly poisoned by the Toxic Spikes, and so I terrestrialize and go for Dark Pulse, which comfortably one-shots the Gardevoir after it landed a pretty hard Dazzling Gleam. So now I know I need to Switch. I just can't decide who to. The answer is to take a look at special defense stats. 63, 64, 68, 107, and then 131. But the obvious answer is Wiki. I switch Wiki in on the incoming Psychex and follow that up with two Draining Kisses which defeat the Ostrich. Emu? Is this path for an Ostrich or an Emu? Is there a difference? I don't know. See, I know that Wiki just can't survive the incoming Terra Psychic. Ganlin can take one. That doesn't kill. That doesn't kill. That doesn't kill. Okay. I should have leech seeded. Oh my god, that did nothing. At this point, and I really hate to say this, I know that I need to sack someone. And in my eyes, the only Pokemon that I could really afford to lose is Durin. So with that in mind, I switched Durin in. There's no way Durin's about to. Yeah. Gosh. Oh, Durin. I'm sorry. I am sorry. But do you want to hear something ridiculous? I switched in Flapple! 
forgetting that it's a dragon. Durin died so that I could get a safe switch and I just threw it in the bin. Gerald, dude, why are you throwing? I forgot I am a dragon type. Why did I not think of that? This is only redeemable because of the toxic spikes that Durin set up before she died. So I decided to switch to Leechy to take the inevitable incoming Moonblast. And then knowing in my heart that Chulip wouldn't go for Moonblast on Leechy, I switched to Hopo. Just one, just one, just one. Okay. Okay, now toxic. Oh my gosh. Why? Yeah. Gosh, what can I even say here? Durin, though your reign was short, and by that I mean you didn't get a whole lot of screen time, you and your spikes will forever be indented in my heart. I am so sorry that it had to be this way. However, know that your sacrifice will not be in vain. It will act as the very fuel that ignites the souls of your fellow plants, propelling them, nay, propelling us. <laughs> to a triumph never before achieved. Heaven has gained an angel today. Or I guess in this context, the wilted box has gained a cactus. Sleep easy, my friend. Thank you so much for your sacrifice. To ease my sorrows, I decided to do some little side quests. I think Pokemon absolutely nailed this. So Bramblin is based after a tumbleweed, a type of plant that grows in dry, arid lands. Once it's grown so large, it dries out and separates from its roots and begins to tumble across ground, dropping seeds as it goes as a way to reproduce. And this is referenced by the way that Bramblin evolves. So when it separates from its roots, Bramblin is technically the tumbleweed, which isn't attached to roots anymore, so it's dead, which makes it a ghost. I want it. The origin story of this Pokemon and its evolution method, I need one. So without further ado, everyone meet Shuka. Now before I go on to evolve Shuka, I want to head north to catch the last and honestly probably best encounter we're going to have this entire run. So I just need to head up towards our- ah! Hi friend. Okay, so I never ever ever enact shiny claws like in these kind of challenges, but this is a plant. Can I use this? It's a crit cap. It was meant to be. I'm going to call her Lepa. The shiny completely distracted me. So yes, I evolved Shuka, but uh, I forgot to catch my last and yeah, best encounter. Oops, I guess. With that being said, I did evolve Shuka by walking a thousand steps and stuff. Then I evolved Lepa, the full odds shiny plant. I still can't get over that. Then I evolved her again. So yeah, crazy. I've got a pink jump luff. That's nuts. So it's time to take on Grusha. Ice types against my grass types for the most part. This should be fun, I guess. I'll lead Jabaka against Grusha's Frostmoth. Turn one, I Terrastalize and click Spore, and since we're out of speed, Tailwind doesn't go up. That would pretty much leave me free to set up, unless, of course, Frostmoth wakes up turn. Yep, of course. Yep, cool. It's fine. Frostmoth sets up a Tailwind and then misses Blizzard as I put it back to sleep. I couldn't remember how many turns were left in the Tailwind after I set up, though. It used it and then missed Blizzard and then got put back to sleep. So this is the last turn that it's up, so I should break break. Oh, it's not even up anymore. So Bear Tech comes in, and even though I expected Aqua Jet, it probably saw a kill with EQ. But since we have speed, it doesn't get the chance. On to Titan, I wanted to be careful, so I put it to sleep turn one just as a precaution. But it does die in one shot, so that was, um... Pointless. Altaria hits the field and terrestrializes. It hits Jabaka with a dragon pulse, but Jabaka eats it for breakfast and Altaria falls. Which means that's the eighth badge in our back pocket. Look at my plant Pokemon thrive. They photosynthesize so fast, don't they? Was that a bad joke? That was a bad joke. I'm sorry. I do a little training before the next fight, but honestly, I'm not overly worried about Ortega and their fairy types. So with that being said, I don't really hesitate before going in. I lead Koba because so long as I don't terrestrialize, Azu should always go for bounce, which allows me to fully set up with growth. Sometimes though, Ortega does opt for charm, but that's completely fine because I'm going for special attacks. Easily enough, I get Koba to plus six without taking a single point of damage. And with that, I'm honestly confident that Venishok one-shots everyone. Azu falls. Wigglytuff comes in. I get some lefties recovery with a protect and, um... Rastalized. Uh, no para, no para, no para, no para, no para, no para, no para. I said no para, bro! What are the chances? Uh, what are the chances? I actually want to know. With Dash Bun on the field, I synthesize back to full, then protect back back to full after it hits me with a crunch. Does that make sense? Then I terrestrialize and Venishok to drop the dog pastry. And at this point, the Starmobile can't really touch Koba. It may not kill, but it'll get it close. Oh, just <laughs> yes! What a fantastic mushroom. I love it. So, bro, get this. Nah, right, okay, this is ridiculous. I head back to the spot where my last encounter spawns, the one I was looking for earlier. And fully, out of nowhere, this happens. I am sorry, what the hell am I looking at? I just came here to see if Lilligan was here. I'm not. What the heck? I just beat Ortega, and I came down here just to see if Lilligan spawns. And, and what the hell are you doing here? This doesn't make any sense. There's no shiny charm. There's no sandwich. There's no anything. I'm just... Too shiny, bruh, how, why, when, why, what? <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Alas, though, for whatever reason, Lilligant just doesn't want to spawn. So after a while of running around, despawning and respawning Pokemon, I figure it's time to go and take on the last Titan, aka the Sushi Gargler, aka not quite a whale, not quite a fish, aka Dondozo. The first fight was very straightforward. I'm just gonna get confused. Watch, I, I know my RNG. Yep, see, did I not just, did I not just say it? Fine. Fine. Okay, so I mean, easy, but like... <laughs>
So we swim after Dundozo, he obliterates the wall, the fish eats some drugs, and the whale eats the fish. Interesting. For this fight, I honestly just let Jabaka seed bomb until the second phase Dozo fell. Tatsushimi, however, gave me some trouble. But Koba was able to finish the job without any casualties. And then, obviously, we go into the cave, find more drugs, refuel our bike. My boss diff does a fetch, me and my bike almost kiss. And get this right, just as I was about to head out, something absolutely ludicrous happened. I'm sorry, what? Bro, this is ins- Like, I- I have no words! That's- that's another shiny. I've found three shinies in the past, like, two hours. This is absolute- look, right? So, Lepa, the shiny, and- and this thing, the shiny, and now- and now there's a shiny Dratini on my screen. I have absolutely no idea how this is happening. There is no shiny charm. Like, I'm playing the game. Uh, this is the plant's only run. There's just a shiny Dratini right there. Are you serious, bro? Uh, come back, please. What the- I cannot believe that that actually happened. Anyway, okay, it's finally time. I cannot comfortably expect to hit the Elite Four without this Pokemon. The one we've all been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Payapa the Lilligan. So up next is the last Team Star boss on our hit list. e -ray. I start with Lepa because it has such a ridiculous speed stat. So I get a charm off, but then... No poison. Why? I said no poison. I expect to love another, provided I don't get crit, so I click charm again. That was a risk, but never punished. I switched to Lychee, and that's gonna do... Okay, no poison. I said no poison! What's the chance, man? I get a Will-O-Wisp off to half Toxic Croak's attack. That's so hard to say, to half Toxic Croak... To half Toxic Croak... Jesus Christ. So with Lepa and Lychee on life support, I switched to Hopo. I terastalize mainly because I don't want to take too much from Poison Jab, and so we set up a couple of Iron Dances before setting up some D-Dances. Here's where I messed up. Hopo got poisoned, and the poison is going to kill Hopo before Hopo has a chance to take out the Starmobile. Lucario comes in but gets floored. Annihilate comes in but gets floored. And when Pissimian comes in, if I attack, Hopo dies. So now Hopo, Lepa, and Lychee are all on life support. There is but one answer. Koba. I was gonna click Spore to set up, but Effect Spore did my job for me. I set up a few growths with Koba, and by a few, I mean six. We want Koba to be on full HP when the Starmobile comes out, but Effect Spore worked against me here. I did get lucky though and Pissimian got fully powered. Venishok obliterates Pissimian. And surely with leftovers chip, we should be... Wait, what? No lefties? Does that all count as the same turn? I'm so confused. So the car comes in and two plus six Venishocks are all it takes for the car to fall. This run is going so well. Literally, my tactic completely flopped there because I was underprepared and Koba saved my life. What an absolute mushroom. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come this far. We've made a lot of friends and a lot of enemies. But with the biggest challenges staring us in the face, it's time to choose our champions for the Elite Four. Jaboka the Breloom, Wiki the Florges, Koba the Amoongus, Enigma the Serena, Payapa the Lilligan, and Lychee the Skull Villain. We will prevail or we will die trying. Either way, it was an honor to stand and fight alongside every single one of you. Rika's up first, and in theory, I got this one in the bag. Jaboka leads and I collect Spore knowing the way out speed. Then it's time to set up with Swords Dance, but West Cash wakes up turn one and goes for Future Sight. Knowing that would do too much to Jaboka, I switch to Wiki just to eat the hit. Attempt two, I guess, and the exact same thing transpires. This is getting old, Rika, stop it. Back to Wiki again, back to Jaboka, again, again. Spore, again, again. This allows me to get Jaboka to plus four, which I decide is enough. I really don't want to lose Jaboka to Future Sight. On camera up, I click Spore just in case Brick Break doesn't one shot, but it does. I have to be careful or whatever sometimes. I click Spore because in my head, Jaboka comfortably outspeeds Domfan. We would have one shot had it not been for Sturdy. But nevertheless, we kill the next turn. Dog Trio comes in, hits a soft EQ, and falls to a single seed bomb. It's time for Rika's ace, Claude Sire. If I'm being real, that was, uh, yeah. No, that was that was easy. Jaboka 8, that's about it. So, who's next? Wait, I'm sorry, what? Two questions, what is this and what the hell is this? Why is there a toddler in the Elite Four? Where are her parents? Who allowed this? Is she getting paid? Is this child labor? Is it legal? After changing around a few movesets, it's time to take her on. I don't care that she's five, I'm not holding back, bruv. Me and my plants need this. Turn one, I collect Spore because I can, I guess. And after one swords dance, Copperaja wakes up. But I feel the plus two is more than enough, so I click low kick, which deals more damage the heavier the opponent. In this case, the opponent is a Copperaja, which is both made of steel and a literal elephant. So I'm assuming pretty heavy. As predicted, Copperaja falls and is replaced by a Corviknight. Anticipating Brave Bird, which would send Jaboka very swiftly into his grave, Jaboka terastalizes into the rock type and clicks Brick Break. We land a crit, but at plus two, I'm not sure it made any difference. Listen, I'll take it. Bronzong's next and wants to click Iron Head, but I know we have speed and we comfortably one shot. So Magnus zone comes in and it almost always clicks light screen turn one. So if I'm being real with you, the sturdy doesn't intimidate me. I click brick break twice, once to break the sturdy and the second time to break through the screens and kill the magnet. Things were going really well and I just, the Tinkaton came in and I overplayed my hand. I got too confident. Ugh. Oh goodness gracious, I die. I just killed Jaboka and it's my fault and Jaboka's about to die because of me. Do I have speed? No! Ah! 
Chibuka, no! No! Chibuka! That was so avoidable! No! Chibuka, no! Why did I do that? Oh, I threw. I threw so hard, I threw. I, I don't want to pick favorites, but Jaboko is my favorite. My favorite lone mushroom. Look at your little face, man. That was so painfully preventable. Two down, two left. This is for Jaboka. Mr. Tax Deductible leads Tropius, and I lead Tanga. I know that turn one, the Tropius always sets up the sun to activate its chlorophyll. And with Tanga on the field, it's almost always going to click Solar Beam. But I figure it's worth it to click Stealth Rocks since Larry's team's made up of flying types now. I switch Tanga for Leechy, predicting the Solar Beam, and Leechy gobbles it up and in two turns takes out the Tropius. But takes a hard air slash in the process. When Staraptor comes in, I predict the Brave Bird and pivot back through Tanga and then to Koba, predicting that Staraptor is going to go for close combat. I am fantastic at this, sometimes. I terastalize to take less from Brave Bird, though it does still do more than I thought it would. Koba lands a Spore and I start clicking Growth and Synthesis respectively. Koba's Effect Spore helped us out a lot here and we can kill Staraptor at full HP. This puts us in an incredible position. When Oracorio comes in, in my eyes, this is my chance to set up. Oracorio isn't too offensively scary, especially against Koba, so I set up as much as I can, meaning all the way to plus six. And with Koba set up all the way, the rest was kinda easy. Koba, you're the best, man. Gosh, I love Koba. That's fantastic. That's so good. That's so good. And yes, Koba. Absolutely easy peasy. Ah! Oh my gosh. What a freaking animal. I'm so gassed. Koba's amazing. This is it. Hassel, you are all that stands between me and Champion Gita. You will rue the day you- God, they gave him such intimidating eyes. They are scintillating. Wow. It's like staring into a canyon. It's like staring directly at a sunset. Goodness gracious. Knowing that Hassel leads Neuvern and almost always clicks super fine, or at least in my experience, I lead Enigma. I should kill, right? Oh, uh... It's fine because Tanga has Sucker Punch. I know that Neuvern wants to use a flying type move, so it's an easy switch. Tanga takes out the Dragon Bat and Dragalgi's next. I know it wants to Hydro Pump, so I switched to Wiki purely because I taught Psychic exactly for this Pokemon. I can't lie though, I expected the one shot. But since we are out speed, I can click Draining Kiss for some recovery and take out the Seaweed Dragon. Axe Face is next, and I know that it wants to click Iron Head, so Leechy is my answer. Yeah, it definitely goes for it. Okay, yeah, no, chillin', chillin'. Chilling. Get it? Because chili. <laughs> I clicked Will O Wisp because Haxorus only has physical moves, and I know that it wants to rock to him, so I know that now's a good time to try and get some setup going. I switch in Piapa to charm until Axe Head is a marshmallow. And then looking at my team, I decide that Koba is who I have to set up with. So long as Hax doesn't crit, Koba can set up to plus six and literally stay at full HP. That's how marshmallowed this Haxorus is. Once Koba got to plus six special attack, it was time to terastalize and spam click Venishog. Interesting. Koba! You're so good! What is this? Oh, Koba, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> and this kills. Oh, and crit as well. Dude, what is this? So I guess in the end, we didn't really need Piapa for the Elite Four after all. Although I'm sort of sad that she didn't get to show off her immense power. Gita, you have no idea the trials and the tribulations my plants and I have overcome to get here. No more waiting. You and me right now, let's do this. Espathra versus Leechy. I predict to reflect and click Crunch. But Gita clicked Lumina Crash, which was terrifying. So next turn, I switched to Wiki to tank the hit. I risked the Draining Kiss, unsure if it killed or not from this range, but I wanted the recovery. And it paid off. King Gambit comes in and knowing that it's about to go for a super effective iron head, I switched to Enigma. Then, I sneezed. <laughs> that did so much. Goodness gracious. Uh, I outspeed though and low sweeps times four, so this kills, right, right, right. Oh my God, no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh my God, we survived. Okay, well, that's, that's, <laughs> Nice. Veluza is out next, and it wants to click Ice Fang. This is where I mess up pretty drastically. I was 100% sure that I brought Tanga, but as it turns out, I didn't. I accidentally left Tanga in the box. That just, yep. So I switch in Ganlin to set up a Reflect, and I guess it was only a matter of time before, um... God, I don't know whether to risk it. I think I risk it. I think I risk it. I shouldn't have risked it. Why did I risk it? Oh, it crit. That mattered. That for sure. That mattered, bro. I switch in Leechy to Will-O-Wisp the Veluza, because in my eyes, I see this as my opportunity to set up. I throw up a sunny day with the heat rock on Leechy so that the sun lasts much longer. Anyway, Piapa comes in and gets crit, but it does way less than I thought, and that allows me to click charm until Veluza is negative six plus the burn. So essentially, at this point, Veluza has been, you guessed it, marshmallowed. I set up another sunny day with Leechy, and that means that I can get Piapa to set up with Quiver Dances, but... 
this is where I drastically messed up again. Gogo has Sab Sipper. And the only attacking move that I put on Payapa for this fight is Giga Drain, which means I set up for nothing. I should have known that going into this fight, but I rushed it, which was dumb in hindsight. But where are we? We are. It is what it is. I charm a few times before switching out, and Leechy comes in to take the Gogo out with two flamethrowers. Hard predicted Sludge Wave. I switched Leechy out for Koba, who, in my eyes, is the only Pokemon who can win for us at this point. I don't terrestrialize because I don't want to be weak to Earth Power, and I put Glamour to sleep. And with that, I decided to click Giga Drain, which is a comfortable two shot. Koba put in the work here, bro. What an exceptional mushroom. Glamora stays asleep, allowing Koba to just win, making us champions of Paldea using exclusively plants. This is what we set out to do, but nor me or my plants can rest until we've taken on everyone. Until every trainer knows to fear the wrath of the plants. We still have more to accomplish. I won't bore you with the details, but we wiped the floor with Arvin, Clavel, and Penny. Nomona tried to get revenge, but got brutally massacred in the process. Alongside her Pokemon, it was a bloodbath. A thing of sheer beauty. I cried havoc and let loose the plants of war. That was cringe. I'm sorry. With that, there is but one wielder of Pokemon, not from this time. This is... <laughs> the ultimate challenge that we need to overcome to not just save the Paldea region from prehistoric Armageddon, but to solidify the victory for our plants. Professor Sada, the most incredibly set up Pokemon battle of all time. The storyline to get here, the atmospheric cinematic build up with the music, Area Zero in all its glory. We are ready. Sada leads Slitherwing, which possesses exclusively physical moves. Do you know what that sounds like? Opportunity! I lead with Wiki and alternate between Charm and Synthesis. Slitherwing is the perfect Pokemon for us to set up on. And you best believe I'm taking advantage of that, bro. I have beaten Sada Deathless exactly zero times, and if the first time I ever do it is with a team entirely comprised of plants, this run will mark a historical moment for me. We get off all three charms, and I decide that I want to burn it to have its attack even further. I set up a sunny day too so that I can activate Payapa's Chlorophyll, but it also activates Slitherwing's Protosynthesis. So Payapa comes in, and looking at the damage output of Lunge, I know in my head that if Slitherwing crits just once, Payapa falls, and my tactic would be in the bin. You see, Roaring Moon terrifies me, so in my head, I need to get to plus six to guarantee the kill. Luckily, we get there, avoiding every single crit, and then finally, I click Giga Drain to get as much recovery as possible, especially since I have the Miracle Seed equipped. I decide that on Sada's other Pokemon, I wanted to Rastalize in Giga Drain just in case we get outsped by anyone, we can almost always kill with the Terror Boosted, Miracle Seed Boosted, plus six special attack Giga Drain from a Lilligan. That was, um, that was a lot of words. Scream Tail gets Oakwood, Flutter Mane gets Oakwood, Sun Andy Shocks gets Oakwood, so Brute Bonnet comes in next. Ah! Oh, wait. Uh, that's terrifying. I should have stalled that. Oh, no. I wasn't thinking there. I should have stalled it. All of his moves are physical. If we don't one-shot the Roaring Moon with Payapa, then, then Payapa falls. Oh, no. Booster Energy Pro Synthesis. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Okay. Pollen Puff is super effective. That's the obvious answer here. We probably outspeed. If we don't outspeed, we die. And if we don't one-shot, we die. Morning. Okay, we outspeed. Does it kill? Please, please, please. Please, please, please. Yes! Oh my god, my heart. Payapa! Oh my god, what a Pokemon. Bro, no one warned me how incredible Payapa would be. Oh, it's over. The plants prevail. Let's go. <laughs> we made it out alive. No one died. No one died in the Sada fight. That's crazy. First time that I've ever not, like, not, not lost a Pokemon to Sada. I honestly don't know if anyone's still watching, but if you've made it this far, comment and let me know, please. I appreciate you more than you know. Thank you guys so much for all the support. I'll see you in the next one.